Welcome back. You're listening to Houston Real Estate Radio. I'm your host, Shannon Register, and every week we bring you news and information you can use on your next real estate transaction. Anything you missed on today's show, you can find us online at HoustonRealEstateRadio.com. And if you've got a real estate uh, question, you can always tweet us your questions using hashtag H-R-E-R or call us here in the studio, 281-882-8088. And we'll be happy to answer your real estate questions right here on the air. This segment, I want to talk about uh, flood insurance because we've had a lot of uh, lot of consumers uh, with questions about flood insurance because the rates are going up so much and it makes it difficult to purchase a home that, that's in a flood zone because the rates are going up so much. And so I brought in uh, Burl Daniel. He's actually calling in for us. He is an insurance uh, expert witness. He does a lot of research and litigation on flood claims. So great, great resource um, to give us some insight into what's going on. Welcome to the program, Burl. How are you doing? Thank you. Good morning, Shannon. So homeowners' flood insurance rates have been going up. Can you give us kind of an overview on what's causing the rates to rise? Yeah, uh, when the NFIP was formed in 1968 and and within a few years maybe issued the first flood policies, um, the premiums that have been taken in over that period of time versus the uh, claims and expenses are just inadequate. The claims and expenses have far exceeded the, the premiums that the government's collected under the NFIP, National Flood Insurance Program. Uh-huh. So historically, the taxpayers have subsidized that, those losses. Okay. And I think there's a, basically been a push the last several years to, to move toward the uh, NFIP program standing on its own feet and to use an insurance term, actuarially stand on its own feet. That means that you know maybe over a five to seven year uh, period that the losses would be somewhat slightly less than the premiums, losses and expenses uh, added up. So uh, that's basically the premise of insurance. So, well, what we're um, you know what we're hearing is that the rates are just going up so dramatically, it's causing hardship on families, and you know that that can be difficult, especially if you're trying to purchase a home uh, in a flood zone. It can be really difficult. I know they've done some some changes on flood mapping too. Can you give our listeners an overview of what the Homeowner Flood Insurance Affordable uh, for Affordability Act of 2014 is? Kind of what that entails. Well, as part of this process of, of eventually getting the NFIP to perhaps just, quote, stand on its own feet, if you will, in mm-hmm. other words, that the premiums collected will cover the losses and it doesn't have to be subsidized, uh, you know, Congress has made that effort and, and directed FEMA, who's the, uh, the, the governing body of NFIP, they administer the NFIP program, uh, to look for ways to make that happen. And uh, the reality is flood claims are catastrophic. It's not, not blue for the insurance industry or the government, but flood claim, claims are catastrophic. And uh, one uh, report I, I was able to find indicated that NFIP was $24 billion in debt, so that can't and go N- on N- F- NFIP, just for those listeners out there, National Flood Insurance Program is what we're talking about. Yes, that's correct. And they're under the auspices of uh, Federal Emergency Management, uh, FEMA. So, um, you know, flood claims are, they start in the millions of dollars when you have a major flood event and go up from there. So part of the Affordability Act, it's, it's in front of Congress now, and, and bits and pieces have been passed, and then they go back to committee whatnot. Um, they're trying to make a phase in, if you will. Uh, they One of the uh, ideas was to delay or defer or let some of the rate increases and premium increases be phased in gradually. Some of them have been a, a total delay. In other words, they will use existing rates, understanding they may not be adequate to pay the claims. Mm-hmm. So um, as the politicians trying to make it perhaps affordable, there may be higher deductibles down the road. You know, I don't think I have a clear picture until Congress makes up their mind, you know, what to do. But it is certainly involved in, in a political uh, arena, being that it's a government insurance program. And whatever happens, we know rates are definitely going to continue to go up. Yeah, I think eventually they will, um, just to reflect the loss, you know. I mean, one example that might be easier for some of your listeners to understand, uh, no, nobody wants to pay these higher premiums. That's certainly understandable. But, for example, if you had a, I used to write insurance on homes out in the country. Well, they don't have a fire hydrant, so whatever part of the premium went of their homeowner's policy, say, that went to pay for the fire losses, you know, that was quite a bit higher. Sure. Here in North Texas, we have hailstorms, a lot of hail up through Kansas and Oklahoma, so those people end up paying uh, substantially higher windstorm premiums. I know you're familiar with hurricanes on the Gulf Coast of Texas as well. Right. Yeah. Well, 
Um, let's talk about the the Tropical Storm Allison Recovery Project. I know you refer to it, or it's referred to as uh, TSARP or the TSARP. Can you talk to us a little yes, bit ma'am. about that, the Tropical um, Storm Allison Recovery Project? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, most of your listeners down there would be very familiar with Hurricane <laughs> Ike and, and Rita and, and so forth. There are various hurricanes that come into the Texas Gulf Coast yeah. year to year. Um Topical Storm Allison uh, popped up very quickly and just sat and churned out inches and inches and several feet of rain, actually, over a couple of days in Houston. Uh, my understanding was the ground was already saturated. You had a wet spring or whatever, and here came Allison and just it just wouldn't go away. And, and when Wayne came back, it kept raining. So it had two or three feet of water, no place for it to go. It was one of the most costly catastrophes the United States had ever seen from a flood situation or flood event. Um after Allison, uh, the, the FEMA, or NFIP, if you will, and FEMA uh, joined hands with the uh, Harris County Flood Control District to try to remap some of the uh, existing flood zones. Mm-hmm. Listeners should understand that the old flood maps were done with transits by surveyors doing the best they could, but they weren't quite as accurate as the technology we have today. Uh, one of those they call LIDAR, light detection and ranging. So they do it with satellites, they fly it with Cessna airplanes to very well-known, uh, uh, keying off of very well-known elevations. So the mapping has gotten a lot uh, more accurate just in the last, particularly in the last eight to 10 years. Uh, Allison occurred, I think, in 2001. So uh, there have been quite a few changes in the Harris County flood maps on certain parts of Houston that originally they didn't think were high risk flood zones, and now they're they are what they call special hazard flood zones, SHFA uh, zone A and B. Some of the things that they thought were high flood risk has actually moved up into zone X, which is a lower risk of floods. So uh, that's just again the technology that's uh, uh, utilizing that, but also it helps the engineers, you know, uh, reconfigure bayous or maybe amend the levees a little bit as they go through repairs and updates. So it was a major, major project. You can. Uh, if you Google up uh, the acronym TSARP, it'll come up, or you can go to uh, www.hcfcd.org. Okay. Houston, I'm sorry, Harris County Flood Control District, and mm-hmm. get a lot of information on that. That would be very informative for a lot of your listeners, particularly in the Houston area. All right. Uh, Daniel Burrell, he, is, um, he looks at the FEMA rules, does a lot of forensic analysis, and so we're talking with him today um, as an insurance expert, just really trying to find out more about why the insurance rate, the flood uh, insurance rates are going up, and um, just taking a closer look at that. What are what is a good website for consumers out there who want to look at the new uh, the flood insurance uh, rate maps? W- what's the best website to go to for those? Well, the the overall website that, that FEMA utilizes is called FloodSmart.gov. Um, there's a treasure trove of information there and an awful lot of links to other FEMA websites and yeah. catastrophes, history of NFIP, and so forth. So that's the overarching uh, website and gives you a lot of information. Um, you can order a flood map uh, for 3 4 $5. They're not very expensive. At a website called www.floodsource.com. Uh, the government has their own map mapping store. It's called store.msc. Dot FEMA dot gov. Uh, flood source might be a little easier to navigate, but uh, you can order the most recent flood map uh, and make sure if you have a policy that your house hasn't moved perhaps out of a special flood hazard zone, paying higher premiums, right. or been moved into a higher premium special flood hazard yeah. zone. So I would encourage the homeowners to consider doing that. Sure, it could have definitely changed if you've lived in your house a few years. It could definitely have changed. Absolutely, yeah. Well, particularly under TSAR, particularly in the Harris County area. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we appreciate all the great information. You can check out floodsource.com or floodsmart.gov to get more information. I know, you know, here in Harris County, this this is an issue because we do have such a, a severe hurricane season some years. You just never know what, what's going to happen. So um, I know it's a concern for a lot of homeowners out there. So thank you so much, Daniel. We appreciate the great information. Okay, Shannon. Appreciate appreciate the time. All right. You're listening to Houston Real Estate Radio. I'm Shannon Register, and every week you can find us here between 6 and 7 p.m. And if you've got a real estate question, give us a call, 281-882-8088. We'll be happy to answer your questions right here on the air every week. And you can go to HoustonRealEstateRadio.com for more information. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. 